Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great. And for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we're going to be continuing on with our VGC Series 9 content and today featuring a team that has kindly been provided to us by one of our fine viewers, Stu. We have featured his teams here before on the channel. They've always been great. So a massive shout out to Stu for the team today. I hope you all enjoyed. Obviously, here is a rental code and we've got a bunch of rentals that you've actually provided uh, already that we will be working our way through in the next couple of weeks so thank you again to everyone who has provided the rentals apologies if we haven't featured them just yet there's been a, a few things going on in the background um that's meant i haven't been able to do as much content as usual but we will get there eventually. So today's team, as you can see, we've got a rain team and the big surprise is the scissor down the corner. Now, Stu really spoke very highly about the scissor in the rain and I do think it works really nicely. I think the steel type in obviously really benefits from that rain and it's got the kind of bulk to kind of get through and cut through physically the uh, the format at the minute. So I'm really looking forward to trying it today. We've got the Kingdra, the Polytoad that brings the rain there. Uh, Reggie Alecki, which is going to be just a standard on rain teams, helps against opposing water types as well as that Rillaboom with the assault fest landerus with the scarf which is very interesting to help slow things down obviously in a bit more of a special one as well uh, the sludge bomb there's interesting it gives you another option against opposing grass types that can be a bit threatening for the team in general and then the scissor wraps everything up so friends as always we'll have a couple of games with the team now we'll finish up with the rental at the end and hopefully we'll be able to talk through and pilot how the team operates so i hope you enjoyed today's episode and without further ado let's get into our first game of today <laughs> First up today, we have a team of Blastoise, Turtonator, Thunderous, Landorus, Rillaboom, and Urshifu. So, um, it's a pretty big team that's gone around at the minute. I'm pretty sure this is the one, or very similar to the one that Fevzi uh, played in Players' Cup in the qualifier for Europe. But I don't know if he played the Turtonator. I'm pretty sure he didn't, but maybe he did. Um, but... Nonetheless, a very solid team overall. You've got probably support Thunderous uh, with Eerie Impulse, Thunder Wave, Taunt, everything like that to kind of help shut down. The Blastoise is going to be the main kind of uh, attacker of the team, you would imagine. Probably Iron Defense Turtonator as well. Going to be a bit difficult, especially with the Scissor here um, in this team, but Scissor doesn't do too bad in general. The Thunderous uh, causes us all sorts of issues. Um, I think the fact that... Uh, we don't really want to bring the rain early game either for that Blastoise. We don't want to be powering up its max moves because it probably will be the, the Pokemon that does go max, I would imagine, in this match. Um, okay, so I think what we'll do is we'll go... I don't know if I want to bring Regieleki, to be honest, early doors. I think we'll bring Rillaboom. Um, oh, it's pretty difficult because we're going to see Landorus up top. Maybe we do go Politoed, Kingdra, Rillaboom... And then we'll wrap up with the scissor in the back. Um, yeah, let's go for that. Let's try and cut through the team with the, the Kingdra. Polytoad combination, early doors. It's going to be difficult though, because, you know, whatever we do, we've got to try and get, remove the Thunderous from the field um, to allow our kind of uh, our special attackers, the, the room to kind of function. We don't have anything to kind of in return for that, um, to do that to the Blastoise, which is a little bit awkward. Um, and obviously bringing the Politoed up top means that we're powering that Blastoise up straight away, which is never really ideal. But if we can engineer and get ourselves like Rillaboom on the field, that might help us a bunch. Um, so I think what we'll do is, let's see what options we've got first on the Poly. So on call, mm, on call might not be a bad idea, but not ideal. Uh, I think we get Boom onto the field. Um... Do we just go muddy water here just to get damage onto the field? Because I think, yeah, I don't think we max. Um, I think if you're Blastoise, I think you got after the Kingdra. I don't think you worry too much about the Politoed in this situation. Uh, so hopefully we can get Rilla in for free almost. And uh, we do have the Assault Vest, which will help us. Might be worth us maxing the boom in this match. In all honesty, I think uh, it makes a lot of sense against what my opponent's got. Eerie Impulse coming out. Nothing maxing. I wonder if we're just going to see a water spout then. Because uh, they don't want to pull the trigger on the on the um, Blastoise just yet. We do mess with our muddy water onto something. Hopefully it's the Blastoise, not the... Uh, of, course, of course it is. Of course it's the Thunderous that we miss. Life Orb doing a bit of chip. It still would have done nice damage. And there's the Yawn coming out into the Kingdra. So that's, that's all right. So more of a support of Blastoise. Although it might be just an option on it. Um, the thing we've got to 
kind of worry about now is obviously them potentially maxing, which they could do. Um, or we just go for a grassy glide because Thunderous can't really touch Rillaboom, so we don't really need to worry too much about that slot. We could max, but it's like what comes in potentially the Turtonator. there. Um, kind of want to get rid of the, the Thunderous, like I said. I feel like the Blastoise is so uh, threatened here. Um, it's going to maybe switch out. So it might be worth just going after this this Thunderous, honestly, with with a wood hammer and another muddy water. And it kind of checks the the fact if a Turtonator does hit the field, you know. Um, okay, we just see the Blastoise protect, which is fine. Fine, 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 fine. Muddy water coming out. Uh, and the Kingdra will be going to sleep this next turn. Um, Um, and it's all about the the boom really the accuracy drops nice probably see a thunderbolt from the thunderous yep the kingdra that's fine i think kingdra is just a bit a bit more fodder for us in this match and normally it wouldn't be you know um we do get some decent damage onto that thunderous which is always useful and proc that citrus berry such a chunk, 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 chunky thing. Um, now my opponent's got the free kind of switch into the um, to the turret near, which we didn't really want to be doing. Um, but at the same time, we've kind of got the option where we potentially could go. I think we grassy glide into the Blastoise this turn. Do we bring in... Uh, let's bring in Politoed. Because it's going to be good against the Turtonator if, if you do see it come onto the field. It's not going to be great though. Obviously the Dragon Titan kind of helps it out there. You know, that's one of the issues about Turtonator. Um, the other option here would have been maybe bring Scissor in. But again, this, the, we got the, the same problem where potentially we'll take a Thunderbolt and whatever we bring in on this Kingdra slot. And we could potentially leave Kingdra in just to wake up. But... I feel like it's better kind of trying to get a bit more pressure on the board now if we can. Um, if that Blastoise decides to switch out, which it doesn't. Okay, so just letting it go down. Hasn't really done much here. Um, and we'll probably take a Thunderbolt. Yep, yeah, into Politoed. Ooh, it avoided that muddy water accuracy drop coming in clutch there for us, which is amazing. Um, all right, what comes in now? Hmm. Going to be the Turt? No, the Latras. Okay, 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 okay. Um, all right. Well, Lander is coming in. Polito's a bit... Well, Polito's very threatened. I think we get Kingdra onto the field. Sack Kingdra. If not, then we get Kingdra in for free. And then it's in a position to potentially... Well, we've got a sleep turn. We've got to burn first. Um, and then we may, may wake up. May wake up. But I would imagine my opponent probably goes Max Quake into <clears throat> the Politoed and Thunderbolts into that slot as well to try and remove it from play. Be nice to be able to get... Oh, we might see an Airstream, you know, from the from the Landorus into that Rillaboom slot. That could make sense as well. But are you going to allow Politoed kind of a free hit here? Ah, oh, they are. They are. They were going to. Oh, but they were going into the Politoed, regardless, so... That's... That's all right. It's all right. Um, and what we're going to see, Thunderbolt come out, yeah, into Politoed. So they did double into that slot. So the Protect there... <coughs> worth. Um, it's probably worth keeping the Todd around. Um, and just go on Muddy Water... Switch Todd out. I just worry about the airstream now. That's the only thing uh, from the Landorus into the Politoed slot where we might be better off just keeping what we got on the back to kind of come in and uh, do its magic in the late game. Um, if we can land a cheeky burn onto the, the, the Landorus, that would be amazing. Kingdra has a turn of sleep. Which we kind of expected. There's the airstream again. It's time into the Todd. Uh, yeah, they're going to double up into Todd here. 
It's just we can't really afford to switch in Rillaboom into the Toad slot, right? Because we take an Airstream, we go down. Um, and the same can be kind of said for Scissor. Like, Scissor doesn't want to come in, not Max, and take an Airstream. Really, you know? Um, but Todd, going to go down to <clears throat> that Thunderbolt. The rain does stop, which isn't ideal. But it does give us the opportunity to get Scissor onto the field, which is which is nice. Um, and I think we sack Kingdra at this point. So we'll get Scissor in. And then the next turn, what we can do is we'll protect here. Next turn we get Boom in, hopefully. Um, let's go for a Muddy Water. And yeah, we get Boom in. We fake out Swords Dance, Max Scissor, and then hopefully we've got enough to kind of just... Finish the game off. Hopefully. Plus two scissor. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe. Still going to be difficult. It's mad. Like, looking at this board position right now, it's like, this is, like, what you would see in, like, 2013. Like, 2012, 2013. This is just, this is just the format. Well, probably not 2012. 2000, um, 2013, yeah, but it's mad that it's come all this way and and still it's a predominant kind of force, you know Ooh, They're letting Kingdra stick around on the field. This is dangaroos. I think from my opponent I know if we wake up and get a muddy water off that is No, we still sleep we kind of needed the uh, okay. Well this that's all right. That's all right Thunder wave not ideal uh, Potentially coming out from that thunderous um, huh. we've got the opportunity where we could potentially, like, they're going to just Earthquake, right? They're going to Earthquake. So I think what we do is we switch Kingdra. It's going to wake up soon. Get the Rillaboom in, get that protection, Sword Stance. They may go for a, um, they may go up Rock Slide. Well, I think it's risky Rock Slide in here. I really do. I think it's risky. They could Sword Stance as well, potentially. If they're not on a salt vest variant. Um, earthquake. Yep. Yup, 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 yup. And Grassy Turing going to help us out a bunch here. And also allow us to get some health back. We're going to see another Thunderbolt from the uh, Thunderous this time. But <laughs> really boom it void. And, and we get that sword stance, that tasty old sword stance that we were looking for. And now we can start the offensive. Right, here we go. It's all golden from here on out. Scissor set up, getting that health back. Now we go after this pesky genie. Uh, ooh. Will a plus two bullet punch get? And we we don't need to max just yet, to be honest. We don't need to max. Um, we could just fake out bullet punch into the thunderous. That's probably enough to get it. I think between the two, because you don't really worry. And like if we see a fly from the the landerous, super fine, super fine. Okay, bullet punch done. Thunderous check. What's the last Pokemon? Fly, come fly with me. That's what we like to see. Lando flying around. At least there's no intimidate as well uh, to come in to, to weaken the scissor. What's the last Pokemon going to be? It's going to be Turtonator, I reckon. I reckon it will be the Turt. Come on, let's see it. Oh, it's the boom. Boom, boom. Okay, boom, boom. We like to see it. We love to see it. We'll go for a wood hammer. Uh, no, 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 no. We need Rillaboom. We need Rillaboom. Let's bring in Kingdra. Then let's pull that trigger on the max. Go for the flutter buy into the boom. Get some big, fat, chunky damage into that slot. They're probably going to go for a fake out. I'd imagine uh, Kingdra will go down probably to the fly. It allows us then back in with Rillaboom. And then we can deal pretty handily with that lander. So the end game here for us is pretty good. It would have been a little bit different if the Turtonator had come out. I think we would have needed to probably preserve Kingdra in that situation just for the Draco Meteor. Because I think the likelihood is, like, if you've got the Iron Defense, you've got the Body Press, you've got Protect, and I don't know what the last move would be. But uh, not something that Kingdra's going to really worry about too much. Kingdra does drop, unfortunately, to that fly. Um, and we're going to get this Woodhammer. 
which we take pretty well because of our, iron, our red iron cord. And that was a crit in the terrain. Cheeky, so rude. And the max flutter by, this should pick up the knockout. Yeah, easy, easy. Easy. Right, and then we've got this Landorus to deal with, which we can fake out and go for um, a max steel spike this next turn, and then um, and then Grassy Glide should probably finish it up. Hopefully, but I'm pretty pleased with how the team's performed in this first one. It's been a bit backwards and forwards, but it's been a nice one to kind of kick us off with today. It's not been the easiest. It's been against stuff that we kind of commonly see that's annoying to deal with in the format. Um, but we've kind of managed it pretty well, especially with the end game. Here, like I say, we'll go for that max steel spike off the bullet punch. But my opponent denying us the 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 uh, the end result there with these Pokemon, the knockouts, I should say. Anyway, good game to our opponent. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the first one today. And without further ado, we'll jump straight into our second match with the team. Our next challenger is Sam, playing a team of Politoed, Tapu Koko, Whimsicott, Blastoise, Cinderace, and Galarian um, uh, Zapdos. I'm just going to say Moltres there, but no, it is definitely a Zapdos. Um, okay, this is a, um, a, a unique build, let's say that. You've got Rain to support the, the Blastoise, um, you've got Tailwind to support the Blastoise. Tapu Koko, I guess, gives you terrain for the sleep immunity. From things. Cinderace is just nice in general, especially paired up with the Galarian Zapdos with that coaching combination that you've got going on between the two. Either one or the other gets coaching, so you can coach the other one. Um, and potentially that layers over to maybe a physical type of Coco as well, which could be a thing. Um, the big thing here for us is obviously that Blastoise again. Uh, Going to be a big, big problem for us to deal with. Uh, and we probably do want the Rillaboom. Uh, there's no Intimidate, but we do have to watch out for Cinderace, Zapdos as a lead from my opponent. So maybe something like um, Kingdra with Politoed in the back. And then I think, what's the last Pokemon going to be? Do we bring Scissor just because it's Scissor? Um, I, I feel like that is the best thing to do. Uh, scissor being Scissor. Let's bring Scissor. It's a scissor team. We've got to bring scissor. It's a mandatory. I think if we were really playing this a little more seriously in that last slot, probably something like Landorus comes in um, and, and can do a, maybe a little bit better of a job. Although the scarf, well, this, no, the scarf's really good against the Cinderace, of course. Um, but I'd imagine, yeah, Whimsicott Blastoise coming up from our opponent. Which is fine, especially when we've got a boom on the field. Big bad boom. Here we go. You are one of the most busted Pokemon that we've got access to in Sword and Shield, along with Urshifu and friends. So I'm quite happy to have it sitting right now in front of this Blastoise. Do we max it though? Or are they gonna are they gonna retreat? I mean they've not really like looking at their team, they do not have the switch-ins to kind of help. They just don't have the switch-ins, right? I feel like we could probably just go max, G-Max drum solo into Blastoise and go for, I mean, we could try a cheeky hurricane into the Whimsicott. If we land, that's great. Take it down to its sash. Um, yeah, let's do it. Because they're probably going to max Hailstorm into the boom. But with the Assault Vest and us maxed as well, it's not really going to matter too much, is it? Biggest biggest worry here would be something like charm on the the whimsicott i mean they're probably going to tailwind i would imagine tailwind um all the, the worst case scenario is actually switch your rear eject button and then and then uh, aqua jet let's hope we don't see that fake out there we go okay well we'll kind of this is like this is this is oh where we go and switch your rear onto 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 the kingdra you took away a life or how dare you take this whimsicott <laughs> oh okay well they got that a little bit wrong we're taking a big lead here early game so uh blastoise gonna drop i keep seeing these blastoise and i keep expecting them to max turn one like every time i am just expecting them to max. no one's maxing their blastoise something wrong i mean we do have most of the time a really boom sitting in front of it so it makes sense not to do that but if you, uh, I don't know. Yeah, it makes sense not to do that. So yeah, 
I can't really complain, can I? Tapu Koko coming out. I'm gonna overwrite our terrain. There's gonna be coaching shenanigans going on here. Hmm. Do oh, what's gonna max as well? Uh, I don't really want to take a max airstream from the uh, the Zapdos. No. I think we have to retreat. I think we retreat with the boom. Get a polytoad onto the field and go for a hurricane. Hurricane. Is it hurricane season? I feel like it is. Yeah, let's go for a hurricane. That's gonna do a nice chunk of damage. Hurricane season is upon us. We are gonna get the hurricane. I think the Zapdos probably maxes. Or oh, maybe not. Maybe Tapu Koko maxes and maybe we see uh, the Zapdos go for a coaching into that slot. Maybe. I could I could I could see that happening. But Politoed should be pretty safe coming in here because it's the most unlikely slot that you're going to go into with an electric attack. It is the Zapdos. I'm gonna see Max Airstream for sure. It will put the Tapu Koko ahead of the, the Kingdra. Um, I don't think the Zapdos will be ahead of the Kingdra though. Would it be nice to have our life orb though? Wow, that's a salt vest. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure that's a salt vest. It doesn't gleam. Not ideal. And the Jack button, we're going to be retreating with Kingdra. Um, we could bring Scissor on, onto the field now. I think whatever we bring in, we've got a pretty... Yeah, we don't want to bring Rillaboom back in just yet. Because I think the fact is, with Rillaboom... It's such an easy target for my opponent just to go the airstream route, isn't it? We've just got to stall out these max turns. That's what we've got to do. Politoed not doing a very good job of that, though. Okay, critical hit. Not ideal. Hmm... This is going to be hard to stall out, actually. It's going to be really tough to stall out. Kingdra has to come in. I think fodder. Because I think now they airstream. Hmm. Yeah, I think what we'll have to do is we'll have to switch into Rillaboom. And then protect Scissor here. Because I think they I think they Dazzling Gleam and an airstream into the Scissor. Um, not worried about the Kingdra, and then the next time we switch Boom back out to Kingdra sack it, and then I don't know whether we go for the Sword Stance on Scissor or not. I don't know if it's worth it. Um, it may be, may be worth going for the Sword Stance because then it means dealing with it, the Coco is a little bit easier, a little bit more straightforward, I guess. So there's the Gleam. Yeah, we needed Regieleki as well, I think, as backup. There's the Airstream. Yeah, into that scissor slot. Okay. Alright. Well, plus two, plus two, plus two. And then they're going to airstream into to boom. For sure. I would imagine. It makes mo the most sense to airstream into boom. Oh, we can't bring Polytoad back in, but it would be nice if we could. Now, yeah, I think we sword stands because maybe a bullet punch would get the Zapdos when it's not maxed. And then the Coco's easy enough to deal with with the Rillaboom, right? So let's try. I think the big fear here is obviously the double up um, from the Coco and the, the, the Zapdos into Scissor to be like uh, Airstream and Thunderbolt, which might be a bit too much. Gleam. Okay. Just got to hope that we can take an airstream from the Zapdos, really. Ah, oh, come on, Scissor, please. We've got the Figgy Berry. That's what we need to see. It's going to hit us pretty hard. We take it. We take it. We get the berry. Yes. Oh, beautiful, 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 beautiful. We love it. And we can potentially the next turn just go for a uh, fake out into the Zapdos and Bullet Punch. Because, I, like I said earlier, I think that... It is going to be Assault Vest, so I don't think it's got Protect. And, and and Coco is not in a position to get the knockout onto Scissor with Dazzle or the Thunderbolt in this position. So, again, this combo coming back in at the end game and going to be able to lock it up. It's a magical combination that Stu's come up with, and it works pretty well. So, let's see if we can do this. Fake out, Bullet Punch, 
and then bullet punch again if we do miss it this time should be should be more than enough just got to rely that there's no there's no um there is no protect and if it is protect i'm going to be very surprised because that hurricane did not very much damage even though we're not life orb it still should have done a bit more i think than what it did <sighs> right let's see let's see fake out bada bing bullet punch plus two technician boost bosh there we go easy it's easy as that that's all we do that's all we do fam in this type of cocoa is it specs or something is it like locked into gleam it's not doing a great deal of damage which makes me think no but it's just not it's not strayed from that gleam this entire match um wish we had knockoff so we could kind of find out uh and then we can go glide and bullet punch and that is it is our opponent going to allow us to do this though we're we going to see that cancel ah, hit the cancel hit the cancel i like the, i like the satisfaction of being able to um to finish your game off anyway great game sam good game uh, made it difficult there with the zapdos in the end game but we managed to lock it up and uh, get around that that awkward end game situation and kind of pull it out in both games to be honest so it worked out pretty well um so We'll jump over now and remind you all of today's rental team. Right, here is today's rental team, friends. I hope if you try it out, you have a lot of fun with it. It is a phenomenal build. And once again, a big shout out to Stu for providing us with the rental. A little bit sad that we get, get to see the Landerers today, or really the Regilecki. It was mainly those four in the Kingdra, Politoed, Rillaboom, and Scissor. But they did a phenomenal job in the matches that we brought them. And, you know, they give us a lot of room to kind of maneuver around and eke out those win cons that we needed to do in both of those matches. So, I uh, I hope if you do try it like i say you enjoy it and you have as much success as we have had today it's really nice being able to showcase these teams but that is going to wrap up today's episode friends i hope you have a great weekend make sure you take care of yourselves whatever you do that is the most important thing above anything else and we will be back with the draft league analysis later on today and uh, then we'll have a draft league game against joe and his new york oblivions tomorrow on the channel um on saturday so do keep an eye out for the analysis and the actual uh, best of three against Joe in the draft league as well as this and then we'll be back next week with more series 9 content we're going to have some streams coming next week which is going to be very fun and we're looking forward to the countdown with Pokemon Unite so we might be doing some content around that as well because I think it's something that's going to interest me and hopefully you as well um, but yeah have a great weekend friends and I'll see you all for another one very soon